Hello and welcome and today is Sunday so that means that today is a day that I will be rambling about things I love and appreciate but this time I think about going big. First of all let's talk about macaque's origins and the story. In Journey to the West, the classic Chinese novel, macaque was one of the simians. Simians is a monkey race, uh, the celestial ones that are special. There is one of them, Sun Wukong himself, the original monkey. Then there's red buttocked baboon, tongue bee gibbon, and six eared macaque. In Journey to the West, macaque appears in one of the chapters slash episode where he tricks the main trio, Tripitaka, Sandy, and Pixie, into thinking that he is the Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong soon finds out about it and kills the six eared macaque uh, in front of Buddha himself. I remember being disappointed by this detail because first of all I watched Lego Monkey Carrot first, I never knew about the novel and then I got interested in the novel and found out that Wukong just straight up killed the six eared macaque and they didn't have any kind of interactions or you know relationship going whatsoever. Sun Wukong is way more bloodthirstier in novel and does some impulsive decisions that are quite questionable. I was quite disappointed by this since, well, I thought that macaque would be something more than just, you know, a side gag, but it's okay, we got this motherfucker instead. Now, to not discredit Lego Monkey Kid, I'll explain everything that happened in Lego Monkey Kid as an, another set that does not connect Journey to the West in the slightest. Warning, there will be a lot of theories since we do not know what exactly happened in Lego Monkey Kid, so I'd rather do not lead you on, guys. Sun Wukong, as the Monkey Kid, ruled his people, the monkeys, on Flower Fruit Mountain. It is said that one day Azure found about Wukong and aspired his ideals, wanting to fight and lead alongside with the Monkey King. He invited his friends and they all created a brotherhood to hang out and just, you know, be brothers. Intermission. Uh, Macaque does not meet Wukong before Azure finds him because we have not seen Wukong and Macaque chilling and hanging out before Azure found him. I'm just assuming that Wukong and Macaque knew each other after Azure did the whole brotherhood thing. After some while, the Brotherhood decided to overthrow the Jade Emperor himself, to which Macaque was very skeptical. It is clear by how he acts and talks that he is not fond of the idea. Wukong, I get you're excited. I do, but crossing the Jade Emperor is gonna have consequences and you're not listening. <sighs> and thinks of safety and consequences more than anyone. He gets called a coward for that, to which I do not agree. You always hmm? were the most cowardly of the bunch, Macaque. Macaque is honestly a realist. He understood that there are very big risks in doing this whole plan, and having Wukong by your side doesn't necessarily mean that you will win the fight. Some people theorize and say that Macaque actually knew that they would fail because in the original story, Macaque is perceived as a monkey that can hear the future, the past, and the present. I feel neutral about this take personally because the monkey kid does not follow everything that Journey to the West already did. So it is quite possible that they just took away that ability from Macaque because that would be too powerful. Imagine knowing the future. Also, by that point, uh, you can see that Macaque has a scar and it's very evident throughout all the seasons that he hides his scar under something called glamour. And while yes, it is a cool detail, some people say that since he's six-eared macaque, he probably has six ears too, he just hides them. But I don't see any reason for them to not draw the six ears, but draw the scar. So I'm just saying that maybe he's just... he doesn't have the fucking ears. It is safe to say though that macaque has a very sensitive hearing. It is implied by this scene. You could say that this kind of loud gong would make anyone uncomfortable, but I really think it's about his six ears since there is a really interesting outdrawing 
of just the sound waves. I think it's real cool. So yeah. Another thing that was real going around was that my X4 is actually white, which honestly this pick, yeah, it exists in the show. It's this way, but. I really think it's just a fault of an animator and not an intended mistake. Like, it just looks like they just didn't finish coloring the guy. <laughs> After they fail to overthrow the Jade Emperor, Wukong gets sealed under a mountain. Just like the in original story where he got sealed under a mountain by Buddha himself, for 500 years. In fourth season, there's a scene where uh, in the past, Macaque comes to Wukong and expresses how frustrated he feels because the other didn't listen to him when he said and warned him about the danger of facing off the Jade Emperor. To which Wukong isn't really empathetic, he's just like, whatever. <laughs> Girl, not my problem. <laughs> After some while, which is not documented how much, Wukong gets rescued by the great monk Tang Song Zong uh, and gives him the infamous crown that just makes his head ache really badly. It's an infamous crown and it gets Wukong in a kind of a hostage situation before the monk. Since the crown is made for Son Wukong himself specifically, he cannot really take it off either, so he doesn't really have a choice. In Journey to the West, it is said that you need to recite a spell to activate the crown, but in Laga Monkey Kid they made it a bit more simpler. There is just a you know, hand motion of a spell that you can cast and it will immediately work on Son Wukong, which is a very important detail later for the fifth season. What follows after is just hard to retching William Shakespeare type of writing. You get Wukong being sent to destroy the efforts of his brotherhood. By that I mean that the Azure Lion, the one he was brothers with, made a place where other people can live in harmony. Even though he kind of sacrificed some things to make that place, he just sucked out energy of the you know, place to make a new place, which is like sacrificing one thing for another. How are you the good guy on paper if if you just sacrifice people to make a place for other people to live? Like, am I dumb? Am I, am I dumb? After Wukong joins, you know, the whole squad, Tripitaka, Sandy and Pigsy, after which Makar gets abandoned. Like, Wukong just goes away and he does not come back for Macaque. To which Macaque feels betrayed, after which they fight. I don't know what insinuated the fight, what happened for that fight to happen, but it did and Wukong kills Macaque. That's it. As I said, Wukong makes some really regrettable choices here and there. It's his shtick, so it's okay. It's okay, he's cute. He's cute and cheeky, I might forgive him for this. <laughs> Talking like Macaque, I had my favorite character too, right? And that's honestly how Macaque's whole plan, whole revenge started brewing. Macaque holds grudges really well. In his first appearance ever, he establishes a very great character. He's sassy, he's bratty, he's really overconfident with himself, he's just you know, hits well. And Macaque plays into his part by calling Macaque hundreds of times a side chick. Girl, he was your side chick. I won't lie, I fucking love Wukong, but even to me, to have an old friend come back from dead, you killed him, mock him, he was your side chick, and not feel bad about it, I don't know man, it is just weird to me. How easily did Wukong dismiss the fact Macaque appeared in MK's life? Kinda crazy. Throughout the story of Lego Monkey Kid, first two seasons, Macaque appears rarely, it's like two times I think, and he is just established as an antagonist which was brought back to life by a Lady Bone Demon. In third season, he gets to shine as a full-time antagonist, chasing the team. Though he really tries to capture MK, it is also quite obvious that Macaque likes the kid and feels empathetic towards him. 
starting to teach him how to use his powers after he lost them, provoking him, but MK never got the memo. It surprises me how much people dismiss the fact that Makak was never a proper antagonist. He didn't ask to be resurrected, Lady Bone Demon forced him into working for her, even though you can see that the motherfucker is scared. He obviously doesn't want to fail because he can lose his life again. I took him as a side guy who just wanted to help MK without showing it and not letting Lady Bone Demon to fully take charge of his actions. She herself threatened him, so I felt bad for him. Imagine coming back finally after being killed and the first thing you need to do is to kill, hold hostage a kid with your ex-killer's powers. I felt disheartened. Macaque always appears confident in his skills and abilities, which makes him a great character. He also makes a great impression on people by being this overly sarcastic, overly you know manipulative guy who is just so fun to watch. He prefers to work alone and that's with a good reason, having to be betrayed once taught him a good lesson and he doesn't want to suffer like he did once. As I said earlier, he holds grudges really well, which makes him a relatable character. He isn't very emotional or has a lot of emotions, but those he has, he shoves them perfectly. After Makak gets set free out of Lady Bone Demon's powers, MK tries to pep talk him into believing that friendship is way to go and he should really just trust and friendship and delivers banger lines. She's completely out of control. If there's a time to go, it's now. No! May is my best friend. I'd never abandon her when she needs me. But Macaque being someone who was betrayed once, doesn't really want it to happen again and he just dips, he runs away. It is kind of in Macaque's style to run away from his problems. He tries to run away from many things in this show but in the end, he is forced to face all of it. My boy is just fucking tired, let him live. It's a sad scene showing contrast between two friends of Wukong. One that was hurt, abandoned and betrayed, one that was not. Yet. To defeat Lady Bone Demon and possess Wukong, Makek appears to help. Firstly dropping off Mayor to help the team, but they catch him by tying him and just keeping him there. Even though he could just, you know, this. Okay, kid. You win. They are pretty hesitant about Makak, but MK, ever so the positive guy, gives Makak a chance and delivers this banger of a line. Help us. Make it right. I'm not a hero, bud. Then be a warrior. To Makak, which actually agrees to and makes it look like this time it was not just by some chance, you know what I mean, because he really loves to do that. After confronting Lady Bone Demon with MK, Makak gets to fight possessed Son Wukong, and let me tell you, this motherfucker did not even last one minute. Man, Wukong is scary. Wukong is fucking scary. I'm also kind of surprised that Makak didn't really get any PTSD from this fight because beat me, I would be tweaking right now, remembering how the fuck Wukong killed me. Thankfully, Wukong kind of literally fights his inner demons and I'm just surprised how strong this man's will is. Bro just ignored the possessing part. In fourth season, we get more of Makak in the best way possible, showing him and Wukong sticking together and being best buds. It shows the argument between Wukong and Makak, which is absolutely amazing to see. Makak himself reacting to what happened years ago makes him perplexed and actually consider that was actually happening. It is safe to say that Makak after Lady Bone Demon is fully on MK's side and wants to help the team, which makes him an amazing character who goes from being an enemy to being a friend, contributing to the team. In fifth season, however, uh, Makak has more lines, I think, with Wukong more than MK, showing how these two actually work together and their relationship. In this season, there's a lot more empathy from Wukong to Makak and from Makak to Wukong. It goes both ways, which makes me happy because it really shows how 
fucked up those two are. Like in fifth season, also you can see that Wu Kong is more empathetic towards Macaq, and he actually delivers lines where he says that he trusts Macaq and actually feels kind of nervous about Macaq being trapped in the pagoda. And we actually get this the scene, you know, that scene, but but. <laughs> I, I hate snakes. I fucking hate snakes. I really want to talk about MK's and Macaque's duo. Macaque and MK are very similar in many senses. They both got really close to the Monkey King, one more successfully than the other. MK and Wukong have one of a type of bond, making them such a perfect duo. It's not any problem, but that's the thing with Wukong. He's always there to get and solve problems. I love the Shadow Play episode so much because Macaque gets to show how he feels and tries to get into MK's head. Macaque is helpless with his feeling of betrayal. MK, even though feeling a bit abandoned by Monkey King because of the things that happened before that episode, still sticks to his usual self and trusts that that's what needs to be done. Whereas Macaq just cannot do it. He just cannot let go of the past and that's his big problem. Not knowing what to do with certain emotions, he just decides to get MK to realize he is making a big mistake. Same premise is met in the episode with Tang, showing the contrast between him and the main team. They believe in friendship, but Macaq just cannot after being betrayed, choosing to stay in the dark. I find his character to be an amazing addition to LEGO Monkey Kid and I'm happy that he is there the way he is. Wukong and Macaq has a really conflicting story. Both monkeys have their ups and downs in their conflicts. In some type, Macaq is the victim and in some other type, Wukong is the one. I really think as the seasons go by, this all shit will be just resolved. But even so, I feel kind of bad because I could not forgive what was done to Macaq. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not think that Wukong is the only one here to blame, but going as far as to kill your best friend is just not the best move. While yes, some people say that it might be something that Wukong needed to do or was forced to do, I still do not think that that's the truth. I think that it was a willing death and, and until they show us how exactly it was done, we cannot speculate anything on that premise. You cannot say confidently that Wukong killed Macaque because he wanted to, but you can also confidently not say that Wukong was forced to do so. In the end of the day, the show is amazing and I really love Macaque. I don't plan on making an analysis on Macaque because my comprehension of English language and my comprehension in reading skills is not that great. <laughs> Though I am here to discuss things I really love and appreciate about shows and other stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye! <laughs>